There are places in the universe where the laws of physics whisper secrets we were never meant to hear. And three days ago, every compass on Earth pointed towards something that shouldn't exist. Before we begin, I need you to do something for me. Comment your city name below and tell me. Have you noticed anything unusual in the night sky recently? Strange movements? Objects that don't behave like satellites or planes? NASA has been quietly collecting data and what they're finding is troubling. My name is Michio Kaku, and what I'm about to share may change the way you see humanity's place in the universe. For decades, I've stood at the intersection of theoretical physics and cosmic possibility, always maintaining that the universe is far stranger than we imagine. It's stranger than we can imagine. But nothing in my 50 years of studying the cosmos prepared me for what 3 I Atlas would reveal. Nothing prepared any of us. The object first appeared in our detection systems on November 14, 2019. We classified it as an interstellar visitor, only the second confirmed object from beyond our solar system, following the mysterious Oumuamua two years prior. We gave it a designation, 3I Atlas, Comet, Ice and Rock, a traveler from the deep cosmic ocean between stars. That's what we told ourselves. That's what we told you. We were wrong. I remember the morning the data came through. I was in my office at City College, reviewing equations that describe the curve of space-time near rotating black holes when my colleague from the SETI Institute called. Her voice had a quality I'd never heard before. Not excitement, not fear exactly, but something between wonder and dread. Michio, she said, the compass readings. You need to see the compass readings. At first, I thought it was a joke, a malfunction, some kind of solar storm interfering with Earth's magnetic field. But then the reports started flooding in from every continent simultaneously. Ships at sea, aircraft navigation systems, even the simple magnetic compasses that hikers carry into the wilderness, all of them within a span of 17 minutes, rotated exactly 47 degrees counterclockwise and locked onto a single point in space. That point was 3I Atlas. Now, let me be clear about what this means from a physics perspective. Earth's magnetic field is generated by the movement of molten iron in our planet's outer core, a dynamo effect that has remained relatively stable for millions of years. The idea that an object roughly two kilometers wide traveling through space at 77,000 miles per hour could somehow override this planetary electromagnetic signature is... It violates everything we understand about magnetic field strength, inverse square laws, and the fundamental forces of nature, unless it wasn't a magnetic phenomenon at all. I spent the next 48 hours in what can only be described as a waking nightmare of calculation. My team and I ran simulations, checked and rechecked the data streams from observatories across the globe. The International Space Station confirmed it. The European Space Agency confirmed it. Even amateur astronomers with backyard telescopes were seeing something that defied explanation. 3I Atlas was emitting a field we couldn't classify, something that interacted with consciousness itself before it interacted with matter. That's when the message arrived. It wasn't radio waves, it wasn't optical pulses or neutrino beams or any form of electromagnetic radiation we typically associate with interstellar communication. The signal appeared simultaneously in the minds of 47 scientists across six continents cosmologists, quantum physicists, neurobiologists, even two philosophers specializing in the nature of consciousness. Each of us received the same information, not as words or images, but as knowing, a direct download of understanding that bypassed language entirely. I can still feel it when I close my eyes. The weight of it, the absolute certainty of knowledge that came from somewhere beyond human thought. The message said this, we are the observers, you have been observed. The quarantine ends when you understand why it began. For three days, I didn't sleep, I couldn't. How do you rest when you've just learned that humanity has been living inside a cosmic cage we never knew existed? The galactic quarantine. It's not a theory anymore. Not science fiction from Cold War paranoia about alien invasions. It's real. And according to 3i Atlas, it's always been real. Think about this for a moment. Consider what we know about the universe. 400 billion stars in our galaxy alone, trillions of planets. The statistical probability that Earth is the only world to develop intelligent life is so infinitesimally small that it borders on mathematical impossibility. So where is everyone? Why, in all our decades of searching, have we found nothing but silence? Enrico Fermi asked this question in 1950, and we've been grappling with the paradox ever since. 
but now I know the answer, and it's more disturbing than any explanation I've ever encountered in peer-reviewed journals or late-night discussions with colleagues who dare to think beyond conventional wisdom. They're out there. Thousands of civilizations, millions perhaps, advanced beyond our comprehension, operating on principles of physics we haven't discovered yet, manipulating dimensions of reality we can barely conceptualize, and they've been watching us the way a virologist watches a pathogen culture in a sealed petri dish, with intense interest and absolute quarantine protocols. The question that kept me awake wasn't, why the quarantine? It was, why is it ending now? 3i Atlas continued its trajectory through our solar system, but something changed. The object began to slow down, not gradually, not in a way consistent with gravitational deceleration, but in sharp, calculated adjustments that required active propulsion. This wasn't a comet riding the solar wind. This was a spacecraft conducting a survey. NASA tried to keep it quiet. I understand why. What do you tell 7 billion people who've just discovered they're living in a cosmic zoo? How do you maintain social order when the fundamental assumption of human importance, that we're the pinnacle of evolution, the crown jewel of creation, shatters like glass? But information leaks. It always does. Amateur astronomers notice the anomalous behavior. Conspiracy theorists, for once in their lives, were actually on to something real. The footage started appearing online. Telescopic captures of 3i Atlas changing course, moving with purpose, and then opening. Yes, opening. The object split along a seam we couldn't have detected from a distance, revealing an interior that made no geometric sense. My colleague at MIT, a specialist in topology and non-Euclidean space, spent six hours analyzing the footage before she called me, her voice barely above a whisper. The interior is larger than the exterior, she said. It's folded space, compressed dimensions, technology that treats space-time like origami. Inside 3i Atlas, instruments detected what appeared to be vast computational arrays, not silicon-based, not quantum, in the way we understand quantum computing, but something that processed information at scales we associate with stellar phenomena. This wasn't a spacecraft, it was a mind, an artificial intelligence, or perhaps post-biological intelligence that had been traveling between star systems for longer than human civilization has existed. The second message came during what NASA officially called a satellite malfunction. Every screen on Earth went dark for exactly 12 seconds. Television broadcasts, computer monitors, smartphones, all of them displayed the same thing, a visualization of our galaxy from an external perspective and overlaid on it a network, a web of light connecting thousands of star systems, pulsing with activity, information flowing at faster than light speeds through some mechanism we don't possess. And Earth? Earth was surrounded by a sphere of darkness, an empty zone, the quarantine boundary. Then, text appeared, not in English or any human language, but in mathematical notation that any scientist could understand. Your species has reached the threshold. The test begins now. I want to pause here and talk about what this means for our understanding of consciousness and cosmic evolution. Throughout my career, I've explored the possibility that intelligence is not rare in the universe, but that advanced intelligence inevitably faces existential filters, challenges that determine whether a species transcends to the next level or destroys itself. We've been living through these filters without realizing it. Nuclear weapons, climate change, artificial intelligence development. Each of these represents a test, a crucible where a young civilization either matures enough to handle godlike power or uses that power to commit cosmic suicide. The galactic community, yeah, and I shudder to use that phrase because it sounds like something from a science fiction novel, but what else do I call them? They've seen this pattern countless times. Species emerge, develop technology, reach a critical threshold, and then most of them fail. They blow themselves up. They poison their worlds. They create AI systems that decide biological life is inefficient and quietly erase it from their planets. The ones who survive this gauntlet, who demonstrate wisdom alongside intelligence, compassion alongside technological prowess, they're invited to join the galactic network. The quarantine lifts. First contact occurs, not as an invasion, but as a graduation ceremony. But here's what terrifies me. Here's what keeps me awake even now, weeks after the initial compass failure. The message didn't say we'd pass the test. It said the test was beginning. 3i Atlas has taken up a position at the L5 Lagrange point between Earth and our moon a gravitationally stable location 
where it can observe our planet indefinitely. It's watching, broadcasting everything it sees back to the galactic community through channels we can't intercept or decode. And what are we doing? What is humanity doing while the most important examination of our existence unfolds? We're still fighting wars over resources and ideology. We're still burning the biosphere for short-term profit. We're developing artificial superintelligence without adequate safety protocols. We're fragmenting into tribal factions instead of unifying around our common humanity. From an external perspective, from the view of advanced civilizations who've survived their own evolutionary crucibles, we must look like children playing with matches in a fireworks factory. I've spoken with neurobiologists who've detected subtle changes in human consciousness since 3i Atlas took position. Nothing dramatic, no alien mind control, no invasion of body snatchers, but measurable shifts in global empathy markers, conflict resolution patterns, even creativity metrics. It's as if the mere presence of an observing intelligence from beyond our world is forcing us to look at ourselves through cosmic eyes. Some of my colleagues think this is the test itself. That 3i atlas isn't evaluating our technology or our physics knowledge, but our wisdom. Our ability to recognize that we're one species on a pale blue dot, suspended in a sunbeam, utterly dependent on the thin shell of atmosphere and the delicate balance of ecosystems we've spent the last two centuries systematically destroying. The third message came last week. This one wasn't transmitted to select scientists or broadcast across global screens. This one appeared encoded in the cosmic microwave background radiation itself. The afterglow of the Big Bang, the most fundamental signal in our universe. Whatever technology could manipulate that, I don't have words for it. It's like watching someone edit the source code of reality. The message was simple. You have 67 orbits. Choose evolution or extinction. Choose participation or isolation. Choose quickly. 67 orbits. 67 years. When I calculated the timeline, I realized something that made my blood run cold. 67 years from now takes us to 2092. Almost every human currently alive will still be living through that deadline. This isn't a problem for future generations. This is happening to us, now, in our lifetimes. The scientific community is in chaos. Governments are holding emergency sessions that aren't being disclosed to the public. The Vatican issued a cryptic statement about our neighbors and God's infinite creation. Religious leaders across every faith are struggling to reconcile scripture with the undeniable reality of non-human intelligence. And me? I'm supposed to continue teaching physics as if the fundamental context of human existence hasn't just been rewritten. I'm supposed to discuss string theory and parallel universes while knowing that somewhere beyond our solar system, a galactic civilization is watching us fail their test in real time. But here's what gives me hope. Fragile, tentative hope that I cling to despite the evidence. Humanity has always risen to existential challenges when we finally accept they're real. We eliminated smallpox. We closed the ozone hole. We developed vaccines in record time when global pandemic threatened our species. We're capable of extraordinary things when we choose cooperation over competition. The compass failure that started this revelation? It's still happening. Every compass on Earth still points toward 3i Atlas. Some people call it a malfunction. Some call it a miracle. I call it a reminder. Every time someone checks a direction, every time a hiker pulls out their compass or a pilot checks their instruments, they're pointed toward our cosmic observers. It's an arrow showing us where we need to look, not inward toward our tribal divisions and petty conflicts, but outward toward our actual context in a universe teeming with intelligence we've only begun to comprehend. I think about my grandchildren. I think about what world they'll inherit based on the choices we make right now in these critical 67 orbits. Will they grow up as members of a galactic community with access to technologies and knowledge accumulated over millions of years of cosmic evolution? Will they travel between stars, exchange ideas with beings whose biology and consciousness are magnificently alien yet fundamentally comprehensible? Or will they inherit a quarantined world sealed off from the cosmic community because humanity failed to demonstrate the wisdom necessary to wield the power we've developed? Will they look up at night skies filled with stars they can never reach, surrounded by invisible walls we built ourselves through our inability 
ability to evolve beyond violence and greed. The terrifying final message from 3i Atlas isn't a threat. It's a mirror. It's showing us what we are, what we could become, and the rapidly closing window between those two states of being. Every day since the Compass failure, I receive messages from people around the world, students, colleagues, strangers, who've somehow tracked down my contact information. They all ask variations of the same question. What should we do? And I tell them what I'm telling you now. We do what humanity has always done at our best moments. We choose knowledge over ignorance. We choose compassion over cruelty. We choose long-term survival over short-term profit. We choose to see ourselves as one species on one world, facing a test that will define the trajectory of consciousness itself. The universe is watching, not with judgment, but with something more profound, with interest in whether this particular experiment in biological intelligence will mature enough to join the grand conversation that's been happening in the cosmos for eons while we've been isolated in our crazy world, unaware we were being protected and observed in equal measure. Follow this channel as we continue decoding the universe's final warnings. Because what 3i Atlas has revealed isn't just about alien technology or galactic politics, it's about who we are, who we choose to become, and whether human consciousness is ready to graduate from the cosmic kindergarten we've been living in since the first human looked up at stars and wondered if we were alone. We're not alone. We never were. The only question that remains is this. When the quarantine finally lifts, will we walk through that door as children playing with dangerous toys or as a mature species ready to take its place among the civilizations that have been waiting, watching, and hoping we'd make it this far? Comment your thoughts below. Because this conversation, this global reckoning with our cosmic context, needs every voice, every perspective, every human who can look beyond our immediate fears and see the breathtaking possibility of what we might become. The compasses are pointing toward our future. The question is whether we're brave enough to follow them.